Yeah, when farmers are sitting down and looking at their varieties, there's there's a lot of options out there in the wheat world right now. Westbred Wheat has done a very good job of evaluating a lot of different lines of wheat. And we've come to the market with three or four really good ones for this area. But when they're looking at, at uh, different wheat varieties, we, we want to look at uh, protein content, test weight, yield, standability. Those are the important things that a grower needs to take into consideration. A grower needs to take into consideration their, their different attributes on their farm that they're looking to achieve, their different soil types on their farm, different pHs. But overall, Westbred has a, has a very good selection of varieties for them. I think some things that a farmer needs to keep in mind is is making sure that they have some sort of plan in place um, and you know understanding that by the time our seed is going in the ground there's some things that have already been established for our yield and our test weight um, and then also you know having a plan for for how we're going to address some of these diseases if they come up you know so working with our suppliers making sure that product is available um, getting it on hand if possible and then also uh, just making sure our equipment is set up and calibrated, making sure our seed treaters are ready to go, um, our air seeders are, are uh, ready to go, and then also our sprayers and making sure that we have them all calibrated and set up ready to roll. I think a farmer should, should think about, you know, whether what kind of tillage they were able to complete last fall. If, you, if we're on a heavy wheat rotation, making sure we're getting good seed treatments put in place on our, on our seeds, and then also thinking through fertilizer and our fertility programs, making sure we have a balanced fertility program. I recommend farmers, you know, make sure they're looking at their nitrogen levels. Increased nitrogen may increase some pressures we see from uh, some leaf diseases. I encourage growers to make sure they're getting out and doing some of that scouting, making sure they're trying to get out there early and often just to catch things early, um, as early as possible. And if we can correctly identify those diseases, we can make a plan for how we're going to address them. And, and I also encourage growers to, to work with their agronomists. You know, understanding we, if we have a high moisture environment, we're more than likely going to see pressure from disease. So. Um, with, with spring wheat, we're looking at, you know, that early season um, leaf application with our herbicide. And, and more, more times than not, it, it's uh, something that guys are doing across our region. But then also making sure we're correctly identifying the diseases as the season goes on. And making that decision to apply that fungicide should be based on, on whether the, the cost does all weigh that potential yield loss. And, and making sure that we, we understand the economics behind it and, and we're doing a good job of managing our wheat. One thing to keep in mind with spring wheat in particular is those two uppermost leaves are, are the most important to protect in regards to a, to a disease situation. So getting good leaf coverage when we are applying those fungicides, whether it be with the herbicide or our late season fungicides, is very critical.